So these are my disclosures. Um, so the practice gap, prostate cancer is often inherited. Um, genetic counseling and testing for men with prostate cancer is rarely done currently. The increased use of testing and emerging evidence may change how we screen, diagnose, and treat uh, these patients and their family members. So uh, today we'll look at the current literature and uh, use of genetic testing in prostate cancer. We'll discuss the genes involved and the use of genetic testing and screening and diagnosis, and then look at the potential value and limitations uh, in the future for genetic te uh, testing. So as you're all aware, we've seen that there's genetic testing for all kinds of things. It, we've seen ads on TV, social media for things like 23andMe, Ancestry.com. There's a lot more out there. There's websites about which ones you can choose. This isn't necessarily just for prostate cancer. This is for all kinds of testing. Some of them will advertise about heritage, physical traits, preferences. Um, and then some will advertise that these can show patients risk of certain medical conditions. So our patients are seeing this. They're out there looking at it. And they're probably going to come and ask us about it. This is from a website called facingourrisks.com. Um, so this is out there for anybody to see. They just list all these different companies that have uh, these testing um, for different types of things. Uh, you can see there, there's also testing, gene testing in there. So um, BRCA1 and 2. These are direct-to-consumer products. So patients can order these. They may walk into your office with these reports one day. Um, and I think we'll be ordering these for them from our offices. In 2008, there was the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, which was passed here in the United States. It prohibits genetic discrimination in health insurance and, and employment. I think this is important to know because these testings uh, may bring up other problems. So you've probably seen the, like, catch a killer by their DNA on 23andMe.com, things like that we may be able to find cancer or other inherited diseases that way. That may sound good and, and may sound that uh, like these patients are going to know more, but it's also dangerous. People may find out things they didn't want to know. So what are the appropriate testing criteria? Anybody being tested should have a personal or family history that suggests an inherited cancer risk condition. Uh, the tests we use should be able to be adequately interpreted so that we can use this information properly to counsel them. Um, and then the information provided should help guide that patient's or their family's future care. Features that may suggest an inherited syndrome. This is from the uh, National Cancer Institute. So cancer at an unusually young age, different types of cancer in the same patient, um, cancer in a set of paired organs, several first-degree relatives with cancer, unusual cases of cancer, such as breast cancer in a male, um, presence of birth defects, being a member of a racial or ethnic group, um, or several family members in general with cancer. I think another thing to consider is also environmental exposure, which is a big deal for us at the VA for prostate cancer patients. Family history is only informative if it's positive. So in the PLCO trial, only 7% of uh, patients had a positive family history. So I think over time, we'll see a shift in that we're not only recommending for patients who have a family history because we'll probably learn a little more from these genes over time. Uh, in 2016, uh, this uh, article in the New England Journal of Medicine looked at several studies where they combined almost 700 men looking at uh, patients with metastatic disease not necessarily with a family history of cancer. Um, they did germline DNA testing uh, across uh, 20 different genes. Um, these were the studies they looked at um, that uh, they had tested. On the far right, you can see the percent of patients that had mutations in their genes. So they varied anywhere from 4 to more than 20%. On average, about 12% of those patients had mutations related to prostate cancer. They identified 84 germline DNA repair gene mutations in those 12% of patients. The frequencies didn't differ by family history or age of diagnosis. And in comparison with a large uh, DNA testing database um, where 
uh, only 5% uh, of the 500 men had local, locally, uh, local disease. Um, and then among that larger database of 53,000 men, uh, only 3% of those um, had, had these. Uh, earlier in 2015, there was uh, this study on PARP inhibitors. So um, Olaparib uh, was used in 49 patients with previously treated metastatic uh, prostate cancer that had docetaxel uh, and either uh, abiraterone or enzalutamide. Um, 16 of those uh, patients had a response, and of those, 14 were biomarker positive. So in, um, for these patients where we're going to see in the future they're getting PARP inhibitors, DNA testing is going to be very important for selection of those. That received a, a breakthrough de designation through the FDA um, the following year for BRCA1 and 2, or ATM uh, mutated uh, castration-resistant prostate cancer patients. This study was earlier this year, so in February 2019, um, a further study of that uh, DNA mutations and uh, prostate cancer was done. Findings were pretty similar to the prior study, so the vast majority of those had the BRCA mutations. Most of those were BRCA2, uh, and then they had some other um, mutations in there that are listed on this graph. They looked at 3,600 men with prostate cancer that were referred for genetic testing uh, over a five-year span. 17% were biomarker positive, and of those, about 6% had a BRCA mutation, which was very similar to that prior study. So uh, I think we're going to uh, see this um, in future studies, too, as we're seeing um, some uh, correlation between those. NCCN guidelines this year added this uh, to their screening. So um, on top of DRE, PSA testing, PSA density or velocity, they added DNA testing for patients with a family history um, concerning or a personal history concerning for um, possible um, inherited disorders. Um, so you can see the, the two phases there where they recommend uh, germline testing as an option in those patients. These are the... Uh, expanded guidelines where they talk about uh, family history of known germline variants um, or uh, family history concerning disease as we went over earlier. Um, so ultimately they said germline genetic testing is recommended for all men with high or very high risk disease or any metastatic cancer. I think we're going to have to work more closely with um, our uh, geneticists and departments um, on this because I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to run all of this out of our own offices. Uh, in 2017, there was a consensus conference in Philadelphia. Several uh, thought leaders across urology, medical oncology, radiation oncology, um, and research got together to discuss how we should um, manage uh, these new findings. And they came up with uh, an algorithm, and I think they're planning on expanding on, on this in the near future. They talked the same thing we said earlier, family history. They identified certain genes that should be tested in certain syndromes. They gave us some specific guidelines on the number of family members positive that we should consider uh, for the appropriate screening. And then they did say all men with castration-resistant cancer should be um, screened with germline testing. So in conclusion, genetic testing for prostate cancer is rapidly evolving and is clinically available right now. Uh, you should consider genetic counseling and screening tests in men with a family history or genetic syndrome or castration-resistant disease uh, and all men with high-risk and advanced prostate cancer.